Hello Spikers, this is James Pardue with a quick video to give you extra tips on how to measure multi-story structures with Spike. So we have a number of industries out there that use Spike that have an interest in being able to measure the surface of a structure and sometimes they run into some complications with how to be able to measure uh, multi-story structures that have multiple elevations, that have balconies and other things that uh, that, that make measurement just a little bit complicated. And so I'm here today to be able to share with you a number of quick tips to be able to make those measurements uh, a, little bit e a little bit easier, more accurate, uh, and to get you through your um, site measurement a little bit better. So just a couple of quick tips. So on the left-hand side, I'll have uh, a PowerPoint with a couple of uh, major points to cover. On the right-hand side, I'll be demonstrating how to execute on those tips. Uh, but the first thing to uh, look at is, number one, is making sure that you're pointing the laser on the surface plane that you want to measure. So this little red dot here will always show you where the laser is and on the surface and where it was targeted when you took the, when you took the spike photo. And you'll notice that it is on this side of this building here, which is on the same plane as this one. And so what that means is, is that I can take measurements on this plane over here and over here. But what I cannot do is that I cannot take photo measurements of the balcony, the area recessed behind the balcony, over here on either side because the angles are a little bit too extreme, though they may be pretty close to the plane, though we can't really know for sure. So what we really want to do is, is that we want to measure on this plane here. The second is to make sure that the laser rangefinder was pointed uh, the spike was pointed at a solid surface. So as you see, that was properly executed here. Uh, it wasn't hitting uh, any of these windows here. Now what's interesting is, is that some of these windows have their shades closed, some of them have the shades open. So in a, in a really, uh, in a rough patch, if you had nothing but windows that you were staring at, really what you would want to try to do is to try to point the laser here or somewhere here on the frame. Uh, something that made sure that it wasn't that the laser wasn't shining through a window like this because it will actually go through that window. It'll actually take a measurement to something that's reflecting off beyond this window. And distance to target is so important. So once again, make sure that the laser is at the surface that you want to measure and that you're pointed at the solid surface. So once you go ahead and you take that photo uh, and and you go ahead and ready to go, the next phase is to be able to work with an alignment rectangle on the plane for which you are measuring. And what I, we always recommend is, is that you try to have the largest alignment rectangle possible. Uh, so what I'm going to do is, is that I'm now going to switch over to the, uh, to the photo over here on the right. And so that's going to expand out a, a little bit. And so now that we have that front and center, as you know, uh, what I do is, is that I'm going to take my finger and I'm going to place it on each one of these here and find the largest alignment rectangle. Now, can I go ahead and do an alignment rectangle that looks something like this of where I'm working here on this um, on this one plane on the side of this building? And the answer is, uh, yeah, I can do that, but that's not really something that I want to do. And the reason for that is, is that because the alignment rectangle is now outside of where I shot the laser. That's not really optimal. Really what we want is we want that laser, uh, the, the alignment rectangle to be uh, to be covering that laser or that laser target to be within the alignment rectangle. So when I look for the largest rectangle that it presents itself, it actually looks something like this of where we have, uh, I'm actually spanning across the two structures here. And I could do that because they're on the same plane. And I go ahead and I hit next. And then now I can go ahead and I can do my measurements. Now I'm just doing this quickly here for you know for you know for the demo, so don't judge me for how I position these these points or the or the or the measurements that we're that we're getting here, uh, because uh, I know you like me, you appreciate short demo videos. But I can go ahead and I can do these measurements on both sides, really sort of cutting down my time. And then once I go ahead and I've I've, I've done that measurement and I go ahead and I hit save. Those measurements are now embossed within that image. And I can go ahead and I can continue on my, on my job. And once again, as a reminder, 
I can only measure on these planes. If I want to measure, say, for example, something on this deck here, or if I want to measure uh, these, 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 these other structures here on this building, this requires a second photo, much like what you'll see here, where you see that we've put the laser rangefinder uh, and pointed and took in the photo with the laser clearly on the side of the deck. And I can go ahead and measure that now if I wanted to. So, you know, we'll go ahead and we'll do the alignment rectangle. And the alignment rectangle that we'll do will actually be an alignment rectangle that incorporates both of these, these porch areas here. Because once again, the larger the rectangle, the alignment rectangle that we can get, the better. And so once again, I'll do this really kind of quick and dirty. But you get the idea. You know, you guys got to get these points on as best as you possibly, as you possibly can. And so we'll get that and we'll go ahead and hit next and now I can go ahead and measure and let's just say that I want to just measure the length of that um, length of the porch there we'll just go ahead and get that in there we go so just a you know once again a quick and dirty estimate and there we go I've got the measurement of the front of that porch and then I now have measurements not only of the side of the building here, but also for measurements for the deck, which is at a separate elevation, as you can see, as you can see here. And I just go ahead and I can repeat that that process of where I could go ahead and measure each deck. But you know what? The good news is is that for the most part, most people that are architects and engineers tend to design things that are exactly the same. So do I really need to measure this deck below it? No, these are going to be the same. So I can sit there and say with, with confidence uh, that with this measurement, you know, being seven feet, two inches, that this deck over here will be seven feet, two inches as well. Same thing when I look at these windows. If I wanted to measure these windows uh, individually, I could go ahead and I could do that. But uh, the fact that these areas can be duplicated over here, so I really do I don't need to uh, to do those those measurements twice. But your workflow is your workflow, uh, and you do it as you as, as you need. But these are just some quick and helpful hints to help you to be able to measure multi-story structures, store uh, structures that have multiple elevations. Uh, and that have different distances to targets to help speed up your process of, of using Spike for your for your site inspections, for your measurements, for your estimates, and for your quotations. So thanks for joining me on this quick video, and thank you for uh, your your usage of usage of Spike. Uh, stay tuned for other videos of tips, tricks of the trade. Happy spiking!